very good morning to everyone. It's good to to um, yeah to just share the word with you this morning. And um, yeah, it's it's a, such an amazing privilege to really to to just celebrate Pentecost and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit with you this morning. It's such a such a, a happening that is so close to my heart, and it's it's such a, a thing that revolutionized my life so much that um, you know what it's 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 a it's it's something that that happened to me that was, that just changed my whole life and yeah the best way that I personally can can just describe the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is that it's really a promise of God's presence with us it's it's the promise of God's presence so this morning as I will be sharing with you the word with regards to this maybe maybe you have never received Jesus Christ or maybe you have never really understood the work of the Holy Spirit or the outpouring of the Holy Spirit or you never received the Holy Spirit yourself. It doesn't matter where you are at in your, in your personal life and, and in your relationship with God. This morning, this message is, is, is specifically for you. And I, I trust that, that as I was, will be sharing and as I will be sharing parts of my own testimony and, and, and just reveal the word to you, that you will receive an understanding and a revelation of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And why is that important to us this morning? But before we start, let's just pray. Lord, we thank you this morning that we can just hear your word and your word is like seed. And Father God, I pray that this morning, as we, as we listen to your word, that you, your spirit will quicken the word to our hearts that you will bring a revelation and an understanding and that your word that is the truth will set us free this morning. Lord, I pray, Lord, I thank you, Father God, that, that this morning as you touch my lips and as you just lead me in what your message really is for the people this morning, Lord, that, that, you, that your spirit will move freely this morning and that there will be lives changed this morning. I thank you, Father God, that this is the, the work of the Holy Spirit to bring understanding in our hearts and to do amazing things in and through our lives. Lord, may we never be the same after we receive this revelation and understanding of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I, I, I honor you and I glorify you this morning. And I pray, Lord, have your way in our hearts and through this message in Jesus' name. Amen. So now, before. When we start to look at the Holy Spirit, the very first thing that we need to ask ourselves is, is for whom is this promise? For whom is this promise? If I, if I look at, at, at uh, what Jesus said and, and, and when he spoke about the, the promise of the Holy Spirit that the Father will send once Jesus um, departed from this, this earth, he spoke to very specific people. And that was, he was speaking to people that loved him, people that, that followed Jesus. These were the disciples, which literally they gave their lives to Christ. They, 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 they came to a point when, when Jesus asked them to follow him, they left everything behind and they just followed him. If I would go to my son and I would say to him, Haku, after I come back from work tonight, this evening, we are going to build a kite. If I say to him that, if I give him that promise and I come back home, that promise is for her. It's not for the neighbor's son. It's for my son because there's a relationship. I love my son. He loves me. We are going to do something together tonight. And it's the same, it's the same thing here. The gift of the Holy Spirit is really a gift that God the Father wants to give to us. And there's a lot of reasons. We're going to look into some of those reasons. But let me just read to you from John 14. John 14 from verse 15 to 18 says, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, and he may abide with you forever that he may abide with you forever. The Holy Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it, it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, 
for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. That is so such an amazing truth there. But, but you can see from this passage here that this great news is for a qualified person. It's for, there's, there's, there's a, some sort of a qualification here that is needed for us to be able to receive the Holy Spirit. And this is the, if, if you are listening to this message this morning and you have never become a child of God, you have never come to that point in your life. Maybe you're living a good life. Maybe, maybe you, you're not doing bad things. You are living a good life. But you've never came to that point where you trust God, trust Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. If you are that person, I've got incredible news for you this morning. You are in a certain sense at this point still the unqualified to receive the Holy Spirit. But the good news is that the very first work of the Holy Spirit, the very first thing that the Holy Spirit will do in your life is to convict you of sin, in your life that you are in need of a savior we are all sinful we are all born in sin because of the mistakes of adam and eve so we are all in that place but the 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 thing that the holy spirit will reveal to you is jesus that is the answer who came to save us and we celebrated jesus the 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 resurrect the, the the crucifixion and the resurrection of christ a couple of weeks back and without that nothing of the holy spirit is possible jesus had to die for us we first need to become born again believers of god become his children and then we can receive the holy spirit you know when i i was 14 years old when i received when the holy spirit revealed to me jesus christ for the first time i knew uh, i knew about him and we we had a teaching and but 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 for the first time, the Holy Spirit explained to me the, the, the love that God has for me. And, and I had an experience after the teach, teaching the, the previous night at, at the youth camp. Um, I had the, 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 the understanding that I need to be born again and I need to be saved. But only the next morning in personal devotion, I had an experience where, the, where, where God touched my heart. And I knew that I need to be saved. And I gave my life to Christ at that point. Now, if I get born again, it is very critical that I receive, after I've been born again, the understanding of the Holy Spirit. That is a critical part. It's not just good enough for me to just become saved. In fact, my own personal testimony of that is that once I became saved, I had no one to explain to me what is the Holy Spirit? What is the part of the Holy Spirit? I didn't even knew there was a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so, so it is extremely important that, that we, that it's, it's critical for we as Christians, when we get, become born again, to get the understanding. Jesus said in John, in John 14, from verse 20, 25 to 26, and this is Jesus that said these words, these things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I say to you. So, so, so here we, 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 we hear that, that all things that I need to know and that I need to understand about the Word is much more than just that day when I became born, born again. And to, it's the work of the Holy Spirit to reveal to me all things, all truth, pertaining my my salvation. Now, just to to elaborate a little bit on that specific point, the importance of understanding the Holy Spirit. Jesus taught in the Word that the Word of God is like a seed, and we see that in Matthew thirteen verse nineteen. We see where Jesus uh, taught about the parable of the sower, how that the Word of God is like a seed, and when in, in, in Matthew 13, verse 19, it says, When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away that what was sown, what was sown in his heart. 
so here we see that 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 this is actually the, the one of the, the the four types of seed uh, soil where the enemy gets to steal and it, it's it's not like he, he, he will maybe steal the, the the truth he will steal the truth that you understand of the holy spirit from your heart if you don't understand it that's what this this scripture is, is saying uh, I, I will be sharing a little bit more about my own testimony of the effect that not understanding the holy spirit had on my life i will share that a little bit later the most incredible manifestation of the holy spirit in my life personally was the revelation of scripture that the holy spirit brought to me when i was baptized in the holy spirit that was the most incredible most incredible thing and that is why we, we so desperately need to understand the work of the spirit now let's look at the ministry of jesus and it, it's important to see we based our christian life on on the life of jesus christ and what he has done for us as christians so it is important to start with Jesus. Did Jesus had the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Now, if we if we look at, at Matthew 3, verse, verse 11 to, to 12, and this is now John the Baptist speaking here. And he said, before Jesus was Jesus came to him, he said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. And then we see in, in Matthew 3, just a, just a little bit after that, in Matthew 3, verse 13 to 7, we, 17, we see where Jesus come onto the scene. And then let me just read that scripture then jesus came to came from galilee to john at the jordan to be baptized by him and john tried to prevent him saying i need to be baptized by you and you are coming to me but jesus answered and said to him permit it permit it to be so, so now for thus is thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness then he allowed him when he had been baptized Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold the heavens were opened to him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased you see Jesus only started his ministry after this point only after he received the baptism of the holy spirit he was baptized in water let me just say that at this point that the baptism in water there's a difference between to be baptized in water as john did and as jesus also instructed us to be baptized in water that's why we still baptize in water today still but there's a difference between being baptized with water and to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And we see the very difference right here when the Holy Spirit came onto Jesus in the bodily shape of a dove. Jesus being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And what's interesting is from this point on, Jesus did nothing before this point. He, did the, he didn't do any miracles, he didn't perform any miracle, didn't even do a teaching or preach or whatever he did on earth, he did before this point. He received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and then he started his ministry. And if Jesus had to do it that way, if he had to receive the Holy Spirit before he started his ministry, so do we. We should not do any form of ministry if we have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's critical. It's so important. Now let's, let's just look at, at the promise of the Holy Spirit. And, and we look in, in, in John 7, verse 38 and, and 37, and there's so many scriptures, there's numbers of them where Jesus promised this, but, but I'm just going to highlight a few here just to, to show you. In John 7, 38, 
he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this is he sp spoke, but this he spoke concerning the Holy Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was, was not yet glorified. Rivers of living water will flow from our midst. Such an amazing, um, powerful promise there. And if we look at, at, at Acts 1, and this is so amazing. This was after Jesus um, was resurrected from the dead, crucified, resurrected, and then he dwelt among the people and he gave this promise to, the, to his disciples. He said to them in Acts 1, verse 4 to 8, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from, from, from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of, of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with, with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of, of Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit will, has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That is such amazing promise it's so it, it, it's and, and there's there's a number of places you can see all through the time that was that jesus was walking with his disciples he was preparing them continuously about the coming of the holy spirit he was continuously teaching them about this because it is something that they that they, they did it is until this day it's something that we struggle as christians even to really grasp and to understand the work of the holy spirit so jesus was promising them the helper and 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 so then we, we come to this amazing time of pentecost when the outpouring of the holy spirit really happened and i want to go there in acts 2 from verse 1 and this is where we where we see what happened there and it says in verse 1 when the day of pentecost had fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole the whole house where they were sitting then there appeared to them divided tongues of as of fire and one sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance and then what's interesting, we, we look at the, we, we then see the reaction of the, of the crowds. Now, at this point, let me just quickly say this. You need to understand that Jesus, at this point in time, Jesus was crucified, right? The disciples were left behind and Jesus gave them a promise of the Holy Spirit. And he, he commanded them, saying to them, wait, do not go out. And they, they literally locked themselves up in the upper room and they were waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. <clears throat> but they were afraid. You can imagine. Jesus, our leader, was now crucified and we are next in line. So they were sitting there afraid to go out. Just before that, it said the word actually says that, that the disciples, all of them, departed once Jesus was crucified. They left him. They left him alone. They were afraid that they might also be persecuted in that time. So there was fear with them. So when they were in the upper room, they weren't just waiting, they were hiding. Okay. It, it was it was really a time of, of 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 you know really heartache because their leader was gone, but also fear. So yeah, they were they were waiting. And then you can imagine. Uh, what was also interesting about this this part is that it's the word says that they were in one accord and they were in that upper room spending time praying together and and came to a point where they were all in unity 
they heard the teachings jesus prepared their hearts to receive the holy spirit and then they were in this room now waiting in anticipation that, that, that jesus didn't explain in them in, to, to them in detail how that will look but they knew that something was coming and they had to wait for it now you can just imagine imagine the reaction peter saying to john john have you received anything yet no Any, nothing no nothing on my side matthew anything thomas any, nothing yet we don't know what it looks like but but we keep on praying and we're in unity and we are waiting but they were but 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 jesus promised and so they were waiting and then the holy spirit came down and they received the baptism of the holy spirit and remember what jesus said you will receive power when the spirit come on you and you will be my witnesses and so then they come and they, they go out this 120 people in the upper room go out and then they start to speak in tongues and and the crowds i'm, I'm not going to read all of that because it's a long passage but but you can read it for yourself in, in acts 2 that the, the crowds were lots lots of different people from all over the world speaking different languages and here they are listening to and the word says specifically the the amazing work of god being spoken in their own personal language even some of them thought this is a funny scene we never, we never seen anything like this these are all galileans speaking in our language but it looked like they're drunk some of, some people said and at that point peter stood up now you need to remember who peter was before the baptism of the holy spirit he was the one that denied christ three times he was the one that 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 didn't understood the crucifixion chopped up, up chopped off a guy's ear Th these disciples couldn't even sit and sit awake while jesus was praying and and so so they were really in a certain sense losers before they received the baptism of the holy spirit now here peter st stood up and we see that in acts 2 maybe let's let's just read a couple of verses acts 2 from verse 16. Um, you can read the whole passage you need, really need to, to see it in context text but but i don't have time for all that so so just at verse 16 but this is what was spoken by the prophet joel this is now peter speaking he stood up and said to them said to them that that these people are not drunk but but they are are now receiving what joel promised and in verse 17 he he basically just um is explaining what joel said verse 17 and it shall come to pass in the last days said says god listen says god that i will pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your young men shall see visions your old men shall dream dreams and on my men servant and my maid servant i will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy verse 21 a little bit later and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on my name on, on the name of the lord shall be saved and then what was interesting after the the, re, re, the peter's sermon he gave this most incredible sermon and we see the, the response of the people after he spoken and his, the words that he was speaking was of was with authority because the, the spirit came upon him and received power exactly like jesus explained and he and, and just like jesus said he will be his witness peter was was jesus witness at that time and preached preached the first sermon after jesus left and the result of that was the people came to a point where they realized that they were wrong to crucify jesus that they are sinful and they asked peter peter what do we have to do and he led them to receive christ to be baptized and 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 to receive the holy spirit and three thousand people were added to the church at that day now what a difference that is to what the disciples were before the the baptism of the holy spirit now how does all this applies to you in my life that is that is the, the the most amazing thing and, and 
why this is so important to us today. If the outpouring of the Holy Spirit had this effect on normal people, fishermen with dirt under their fingernails, the same can happen to us when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In Acts 4, verse, verse 5 to 13, just in, as an example of this, in verse 13, the word says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, this is a little bit later when, when, when Peter and John spoke again. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Okay, so how do we receive the Holy Spirit? How do we receive the Holy Spirit? And this is very important. And I really pray, and I, and I, and I, and I want to challenge you at this point. I'm going to explain how to receive the Holy Spirit. But I really want you to, to think at this point, as I am explaining this, there's basically four groups of people that, that is somewhere in your walk with Christ. There's basically four groups of people. And I want you to think, where are you standing with regards to the Holy Spirit? And, and, and if you, even if you are listening to this message and you have received the Holy Spirit, this question is primarily for those that have not received the Holy Spirit yet. Okay, let's say that. But through my testimony that you will hear, as, as I will be speaking about it right now, I've also received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but with not understanding it, 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 it placed a lot of, a, a huge delay on my walk with Christ, where I did not walk in power, in, in the fullness that God intended me to walk in. So maybe the way that we received the Holy Spirit um, wasn't with the right understanding. And for that reason, we missed parts of it. And so, so this is a very sensitive part for me because it's so close to my, my own personal testimony. So the, the, the first group of people that I, that I just want to touch on is the group that has not been, been born again. Now, as I explained earlier, I received Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior when I was 14 years old. And that was the very first work of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you at that point where you have not received Jesus Christ, then you of part of that first group, the unqualified. But the Holy Spirit is here to quicken your heart. And I pray that as I, as I speak, and, and, and really I trust God for this, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not the preaching that can touch your heart and quicken this to your heart. This is the work of, your, of the Holy Spirit. So if you listen to this message, and you, they, there's, there's something in you, in you that is saying to, to you that, you need to, to draw closer to God and, 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 and God loves you and, and you need to, to repent and receive Christ. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. So that's the first group. The second group have never received the Holy Spirit. They've been baptized, in, uh, 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 pardon me, they've, they, they've been born again, they received Christ as the person, Lord and Savior, but they have not been baptized baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, after I received uh, uh, being baptized, sorry, um, born again, I also, I didn't even knew that there was a Holy Spirit or, uh, or didn't have the explanation. I knew there was a Holy Spirit from church. I heard the name here and there. And we pray in God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I had little bits and pieces of that, but I had no understanding of the, of the full work of the Holy Spirit. In fact, I had, I had no, I didn't even knew at that point that there was a baptism in the Holy Spirit. I had a complete misunderstanding of the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. And the result of that was that for five years, I basically backslid it. Because if you are trying to live a Christian life without the Holy Spirit, you will experience a stand up and fall down lifestyle all through your Christian life. 
because it's the work of the Holy Spirit to help us to stay standing, to, to stay standing and to walk in the Spirit and to walk in, in power and, and, and in this place of victory daily. That was always the intention of, of God. So for five years, I've been at that place where I haven't received the Holy Spirit. And, I, and, and my life was a, basically backslidden from that time until somewhere in my matric year where I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It was a point in my life where I came to a standstill and I realized that I cannot go any further. I've wasted my life until that point. I, I, I really, there was no relationship between me and God. I hardly read the Bible. I hardly prayed at that point for, the, for, for that time. And I came to a place where I came to the end of myself and I realized that I, I desperately need God. And then, and then at that point, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What's amazing about that was I basically, I literally broke out in tears on my floor, on my knees, crying. And I saw my life the, the last five years that was such a mess flashing before me. And I just remember how I just felt a weight that was lifted from my shoulders. And I just knew that I was, I, I've been forgiven. And, and I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, I didn't have the understanding of that. And, and so, so years later, when I received the understanding of, of, of what happened to you when you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I realized that, that I received power because when I got, went out from there, I had no fear to speak about God. I had an incredible understanding of the word. When I opened the word, it was like life that came to me. And I remember sitting on a, on a tree in my, in my parents' garden, teaching friends of mine of the things of the word with authority. How did I learn those things? I had no idea. The Holy Spirit taught me those things. So I saw the power or the, the change in my life, a radical change. And, 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 and to, 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 to go out and, and without fear, just like the disciples when they would be, have been baptized, go out and, and just do the things. Um, pertaining our salvation but the the power still in a certain sense lack because I haven't received the full understanding so we have to receive an understanding of the word regarding the baptism but then the power the the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the power that, that comes with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit it's available to us God said that, that you just have to ask. A father will not give to his son a stone if you ask for a bread. So much more the father in heaven will, will withheld the Holy Spirit when we ask of him. So the Holy Spirit is available to us. He wants to give it more than we want to receive the Holy Spirit. But it's for us to receive it and to accept it. And that's, this, that's the next point. And don't worry about the points. We will, we will put the summary on afterwards so you can take a picture of it. So just, just listen to where are you at this um, in, in these couple of groups. So the next point is you need to receive and accept the word in faith. You need to receive. You need to, to, to agree with what God is explaining and get an understanding of, of that. Another way to say it is really you need to come to a point where you are hungry and you really desire more of God. And, and, and then the next, you come to the next point, which is just to ask. Just simply ask. In Luke 11, um, from 11 to, to 13, um, you can read it for yourself. It's, it's basically just God saying that I will give you the Holy Spirit more than you are willing to, to ask for. So just ask and you can receive. But the, but, but the thing is, it's one thing to ask. And maybe you've been, someone prayed for you to receive the Holy Spirit sometime. And you, 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 received, the, you, you received the prayer and you even prayed the prayer after them. And, and, and so and that's fine. And, and, and that it can happen, for sure it can happen, that you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit at that time. But you see, here's the thing. The word of God says in Mark 11 verse 24 that therefore I say to you, 
whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. You need to believe that you receive. You need to believe that you receive. This is so. This is so important. This is a. This brings me to the third group of people, and that is is that. Maybe you are one of those that that you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, like I did when I was in my matric year. You received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but there's no power. You don't see the miracles operating. You don't see. You, you don't, you don't see yourself move in the same power that that John and Peter and those disciples moved after they, they received the, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And maybe I can just explain that a little bit in, in, in my own in my own testimony. I only received and accepted part of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You see, I could I could live with the fact that I can now understand the word of God. And I can speak to people to people with boldness. I could accept that part, but it was difficult for me to accept the part of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, for example, or the gifts of the Holy Spirit that place me in a position where I have to perform those, those miracles. Although it's not me, it's the Holy Spirit that, that does the, these works. Um, even the, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit is given by one spirit, by the Holy Spirit. But I didn't saw that in my life because I, it was difficult for me to un, to to accept something that I didn't understood completely. And the result of that was that for years after I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, I've been living without the power of God. And really, the, the, in, in essence, since that time, for a year or two after that, I, I, I was, I was uh, moving, I was, was doing a lot of things for God, but it ended up in me doing a lot of things for God in my own strength. And I came to a point of burnout and, and because I was doing it out of my own strength, i started to rely on myself, but, but not just that, there was a lot more. And, and I don't have time now to explain and, and the, the, the speaking in tongues is really a message and, and it deserves a whole teaching on itself. But let me just say this, that the speaking in tongues, to, to be able to speak in tongues um, is, is a, a, a tool that comes along with the spirit. You, it's the, the, let me just say this, that the speaking tongues is not, it is not the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It is not to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You get baptized in the Holy Spirit and you, re, you, re, and you receive a tongue. You receive the speaking tongues. It comes with that. But you have to accept that. You have to understand and accept that. And for me, I did not accept that. I, I, in, in fact, it was weird to me. And I rejected it. And I rejected the, the miracles and, and, and those things. I thought that that was only for the, for the disciples and for the time of Jesus, but not for us. And so it was weird and I, I, I couldn't accept it. And you know what? Like anything, any gift that you will receive from God, you cannot receive anything from God if you don't desperately want it. And once you get, you receive it in faith. And I accepted the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and it was amazing, but I didn't accept speaking in tongues. I didn't accept the power that 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 um, that, that it goes along with the, with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And for years I didn't accept, I didn't receive anything until I received a teaching and a proper understanding of the part where the where, where, the, where, where speaking in tongues gonna come in and what that will do to my life. And so, so that is maybe maybe you're in that place, and it's it's not to say that that if you re receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that boom at that same time immediately you will start to speak in tongues. I received, I remember years later, <coughs> sorry later, someone explained to me, a friend of mine explained to me the the, the speaking in tongues, and and I, the guys prayed, the guy prayed for me, and 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 I, I really wanted. Um, I wanted it, but I was so afraid. It was so strange to me, and I received only two words. And and you know what? I I was like, say so I said those two words, and it was so so weird. And I thought it was my own my own thoughts and and things. And so I just neglected it, and I just left it. And for years after that, 
um, I just left it. And and then I, I, um, our family joined uh, Sheriff in East London. And for the first time, I really um, received a, a, a revelation of that. But I still had to come to a point where I where I accepted that. And and once I accepted that, it wasn't like it was just a flood that gate had opened up and I received um, uh, you know books full of sentences. Um, God took me back to that day when He gave me two words. And this is a very important point. If you received two words, you need to be faithful. Like anything in in, in the kingdom of God, it works like this. If you are faithful with a little, God will increase. He will bring, he will give to you more. And, but we need to desire that. And so, okay, that brings me to the fourth group of people. Maybe you have received the Holy Spirit. And you have actually, you are in that place where you walk, you walk in the Spirit daily. And you, you, you speak in tongues and, and, and all these things. And while we're still on tongues, let me just say this, that, I know many people are asking this question. Do I have to speak in tongues? Okay. You don't have to speak in tongues to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, as I explained through my own testimony. You don't have to. The question is, why would you not want to? It is such a tool that God gave to us. There was a lot of misunderstanding with regards to the tongues, even in the Bible's time, and, and Paul had to correct some of the churches where they just went, um, you know, over the hill with, with with a lot of things and he needed to correct him so there is guidelines with regards to speaking in tongues and it's, it's very specific the word is very clear about the speaking in tongues and and i trust that we will get an opportunity to explain to you more about that but it is important to to know that 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 the the to you 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 receive you receive you can receive it but you need to 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 want to to receive that um Speaking to, to, to speaking tongues. Okay, so let me just go to the fourth group. The fourth group, maybe you are listening to this message. You are speaking in tongues. You are you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You move daily in, in the Holy Spirit. But you just where you came to a point where you just where you are just just tired. And and this is very personal to me. I um, a couple of weeks back, actually two weeks ago. Um, while at this time, while we were worshiping, I was here in my room alone and Yulani just took the kids away. And at that point in time, it was a difficult time for me. And, and, and I, was, I, was, I was really wrestling with God that morning. Since I've been waking up, I, I was wrestling with God and, and, and I, I was teaching people about things. And, and, uh, and I, will, I will speak to people and God will give me a word. Um, a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom, or he will just give me a prophecy. Um, the moment I pray for people, you know, it's like the, it, it's like God will speak to me, and I will hear His voice so clearly, and I and I will move in that direction, and it will be, it will be accurate. But there's one area in my life where I was just keep on struggling, and and then I think I get I get a breakthrough, and, and I receive a revelation from God, and I. And I and I attend it to that, and I correct that part, and 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 it's like it. God will show me that's it. You you you're on it, and and then just a, a while later, um, it's like this. This thing just doesn't want to break through. It's like I can't get a breakthrough, and it's really tiring me out so much. And I was just before God with that thing that morning, and some of you will remember this. I said to a couple of people's um, um, people. These last couple of, of weeks, something that God showed me during this whole coronavirus thing was the way that we look at things. And, and um, God explained to me um, in a, just a new way that how we need to be like, um, like, like Elijah. That when he and his servant was um, there alone and, and the army came around him and his servant was freaking out because of this, this major army of thousands that, that came around him. And he said to Elijah, Elijah, what are you doing? Look at this. Can't you see them? Um, and he was like, like really freaking out. And, and Elijah was just resting and he said to him, listen, um, they that, that are with us are more than they that, that are against us. And he didn't understood it, the little servant. And then Elijah asked, Lord, just open his eyes. 
And that was something that God showed me just to open my eyes, to see. And I was, I was, I was, I was speaking this to, I, I, I told people this over these last couple of weeks. And yet, in my own life, there was this one area where I just couldn't see in, this, in the spirit. I just couldn't see what God was busy with. And so I was here during the worship. I think in the second last song, it was like the Holy Spirit came on me so strong. And the, the, what, was, what was amazing is God literally took me back. And the, even during, the, during Corbus's message, while he was preaching, the, the Holy Spirit took me back to the time when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And what God showed me was this, and, and, and you need to, to, to just use your imagination here. Imagine that time when I was sitting on, my, on the edge of my bed. I was actually at the point of suicide at that point in Matric. Sitting on the edge of that bed, contemplating, my life is on, the edge, on, on a knife's edge. Can God still forgive me or am I going to take my life? That was the thoughts that, that went through my, my mind at that day. And God took me back to that moment where he, he showed me where, where God, and just imagine that, where God is looking down on me that day. And you are there with God and you are looking at his reaction towards Nas in 1996. I can't explain to you what happened that moment, but the Holy Spirit came over me and I went down on my knees and I remember that time. And you know what God did in those moments? He opened my eyes to see. He opened my eyes to what he is busy with. And he made my ears to hear these words that Nas, I love you. And I was looking down on you in those moments. And I, I, I was just waiting for that day. I, I had such an amazing plan for your life. And it's not over yet. It cannot stop at, in 1996. It cannot stop on that day. I've got a plan for your life. And so here it is. I baptize you now with my Holy Spirit. The one thing that went wrong since you received me as your personal Lord and Savior, I'm correcting that now. And I pour out my Spirit on you. Now, go out and be my witness. My life was never the same after that. Everything changed since that point. So maybe you are here this morning and, and you have not received Jesus Christ. Or maybe you are the one that, that received Jesus Christ, but you have not never received the Holy Spirit. Maybe you are the, the one that received the Holy Spirit, but only parts of it. You, you are still a bit hesitant. Maybe you don't understand the fullness of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit completely. Maybe you're just tired. Maybe you just need God to just give you a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit again. Just so that you can see in the Spirit. And not look at Corona. Not look at the circumstances that is so pushing you. And I know there's people that is, that is looking in the, to the future and you can only see the enemy this morning. You look at your work and, and you realize you have lost your work. You don't know where to go. I want to say to you this morning that God wants to open your eyes to what he is busy doing. But there's certain things, there's a certain response that come that you need to do. It is available to you, but you need to receive in faith you need to ask and receive from god in faith and then believe that you receive 
Father God, I thank you for this message this morning. Lord, I pray now, Lord, as we break up in groups, and as we go into the rest of this day and weeks to come, Lord, that we will open our hearts to you, that we will open our understanding. I pray, Father God, for false teachings or false um, knowledge that we have in our, in, in our minds and in our hearts, um, or things that 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 we um, are, that, that that is that is blocking us from receiving. I pray, Lord, that you will take away those things in Jesus' name right now, and that you will bless us with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.